Yeah, yeah, yeah forget jumping ahead. New York. You're jumping ahead. The yeah, question that a lot of ahead. people have is, why did you? Why were you running away from the Venezuelans? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, from well, they were threatening to kill you. That's, yeah, that's but, a good but reason. they got really aggressive because okay. they started telling me, "Listen, we know where your family lives in Venezuela, and all mm -hmm. my family lives down there." And they said, "We're gonna kill them. We're gonna kill them all." Well, man, how, and, close, uh, how close were you? To what? Your family. Well, there are some people that I like, but uh, but uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, they weren't really it's a family. lot of money. Like I can, I can get another cousin. Well, you know what's crazy? After I did my time, all my family's like, "Yeah, man, he ruined our lives. Now we cannot go anywhere." And I'm like, yeah. first of all, you weren't going anywhere, anyways. Hmm. And yeah. second of all, nobody went after you. They were after me. Mm -hmm. You know. So during that time, I have these guys calling me and calling me and listen. We need to. We need the money. We need the money. So at one point, they go. You need to come to Venezuela and face us, bro. You need to come here. We want to see you. We want to look at you in the eye. And you have to tell us that you lost our money. And I'm like, shit, I got to do this. So I'm dating a girl at the time. And I tell her, listen, I'm going to go to Venezuela. And uh, I'm going to, this is about 2000, I want to say like 2008. I'm going to go there. And uh, I'm going to call you as soon as I land. If I don't call you, they kill me. All right. She's all right. All right. So I show up in Venezuela. And I have a couple of guys from the military. They used to escort me out of the plane. Like they will open the plane and two military guys will come in and go to the air attendant, like the flight attendant. Like, and I'll be sitting there and they'll be like, Tung! Hey, Juan Sanchez, can you please come to up? Uh, they were ready for you. So they will come in and they will escort me out. And I kept telling them, dude, don't do that. I can't go. No, no, no. Because, you know, we don't want you to go through costumes and we want to make sure, you know. I'm like, mm. do that. It's, I, I don't come with anything. Mm -hmm. So I go there. The guys looked at me. They said, man, you're in deep shit. You need to give us our money. And we're going to hold you here until we get the money. I said, dude, if you hold me here, I cannot get you your money. I need to be in the States. That's where I make the money. Mm -hmm. They said, uh, well, you're going to have to figure out. You're, you're going to have to call from here. You're going to have to figure out, but we're not letting you out. So they locked me in a hotel room in Caracas. And uh, they have these guys watching me. And they're partying and they're calling these sloppy hookers that are going to their room and they're getting wasted and drinking. And I'm like, oh, my God, man, I can't do this stuff. Uh, who are the guys? Military? <sighs> or? I don't know. Well, they, well I don't want to say military because in the United States you say military and it's the guy with a uniform and mm -hmm. shape. In Venezuela, when you say military, it's the guy with a big belly and mm -hmm. he hasn't fired a gun in like 10 years. And, you know, so uh, they could have been military. They could have oh. been, you know, farmers. Right. And... Uh, so they're there and they're, you know, with these horrible hookers and they're like, hey, listen, you want to come here? I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. Thank you, man. So I'm trying to figure out, man, what to do, what to do. So I'm talking to the big guys the following day because they're doing this every night. And I'm trying to tell them, listen, the only way that I can recover your money is if you give me more money because it takes money to make money. So what I got to do is I have to buy all these apartments that are now 40000 and we're gonna hold them until they go up again. And then we're kind of like evening out your losses. Kind of like what people do right now with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Just keep buying, as it's going down, just keep buying. Buy the dip. Yeah, so I said, man, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna buy a bunch of those apartments at 40,000. And then, listen, I sold them to you at 300,000. I can sell them again at 300,000. Man, you'll make a bunch of money. They go, well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll think about it. Man, I see that things are not happening. So I called this girl, Michelle, one day that these guys are drunk, the guys that are watching over me. And I said, babe, you need to get me on a plane. I need to get the fuck out of here. These guys are going to kill me. They're not buying this whole it takes money to make money thing. Mm -hmm. I got to get out of here. So get me on the first plane out of here. I'm going to try to, you know, get my passport, and I'm going to get out of this room. So I pick up my passport. I get out of the room. I go to the lobby, and I'm, like, running. I'm telling the guy in the lobby, get me a cab to the airport. Get me a cab to the airport. She buys a first-class ticket for like $1,500 one way from Caracas to Miami. She tells me, listen, as soon as you get there, there is, you go to, go to the counter, give them your name. They're waiting for you. I said, well, I'm going to call you when we're taking off. If I don't call you, they cut up to me and they kill me. Mm -hmm. So I get on the plane. I land in Miami. They start calling me. Man, what the fuck? I'm like, listen, bro. Jesus. I need to. I need to be in the United States. I cannot recover your money, guys. I need your. I need. Listen, I need to work it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you the money, but we need you to do some things for us. I said, all right. What's it gonna be? 
we need to we need you to buy some cars and we need you to buy some diapers and some Converse shoes and a couple of cell phones and an Xbox and I'm like all right yeah. he's like yeah just give us a number and I'm like well you know the two cars and the Xbox and the diapers and the stuff yeah I don't know man 120,000 all right so they will wire me this money and I will do all these things but it gets annoying I mean there was a point that these guys will call me and say like hey listen we need 2,000 pairs of Levi's jeans and I'll be like dude the hell? I don't have time for that shit, bro. I'm yeah. trying to like make a living here. Yeah. So like you're like they have you grocery shopping for them. Yeah, and they'll be like, well, if you don't give us a Levi's jeans, we're gonna kill your family. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Are you kidding me? So this keeps going on and on and on. Then at one point, I said, listen, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, dude, I can't do this anymore, bro. I mean, I keep losing your money, and and I cannot continue <laughs> asking you for money because this this hole is getting a little too deep. And they send me a video, so they're like, okay, listen. You don't want to work with us? You don't want to do what we tell you to do? You'll see. So they send me this video, and the subject says, this is what's going to happen to you. And I open the video. I only watch, like, probably, like, 10 seconds of the video. Because it's, like, it's, it isn't. I think you should have it here in concrete. I'll find it. You guys will play it. Is it online? Yeah. I, gotta, I could find it somewhere. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, I, I doubt. I well, no, maybe not, I, not I doubt. Maybe on, uh, maybe on uh, maybe on maybe on uh, uh, true crime. <laughs> no, l listen yeah. to what the video is. So they yeah. they they go to this prison and they pay these inmates to make a circle and grab one of the inmates and take turns raping him. And a guy is filming this on a phone. Mm. And then they're yelling like, "Oh, this is what's gonna happen to you!" And they're raping him one after the other, one after the other. After. Uh, well, of course, you know. I mean, it's not something that you grab popcorn and you're like. <laughs> Yeah. Let me see how this shit ends. I watched like 10 seconds and I'm like, oh my God. Fuck. I can see this shit, you know? That was one of the videos. Then they sent me another video like two months later of a guy that is just driving on a motorcycle. He goes into a barber shop and goes to a guy and boom, 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 just shot him. And then they're like, this is what's going to happen to you. And I'm like, dude, you got to stop killing people just to send me a message, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can just tell me I'm going to kill you and it's pretty scary. Yeah. Mm. What happened to the inmate? Did the inmate get killed too? Well, I, what, I never watched the whole thing, but the feds did. And at some point, I'm talking to the feds, and uh, they tell me, listen, we're going to show you the video. You need to identify it. I said, I only seen like 10 seconds of the video. They said, okay, if you see the first 10 seconds, would you recognize it? I said, I think I cannot miss it. Yeah. So they show me the first 10 seconds, and sure enough, it's a circle, and, they're hitting, and I'm like, yeah, dude, that's the video. So there is three agents there, and the prosecutor, and I said, you guys watch that video? And the prosecutor goes, no, 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 no. And then I asked the agents, did you guys watch it? And one of the agents goes, oh, I watched. And I said, how does it end? <laughs> they said, well. It's not a love story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are the credits, like these movies dedicated to, <laughs> to dedicated in the memory to of, one. yeah. Well, I guess they kill this guy and they chop him into pieces. Well, there's a, who I want to meet is the guy that is on the phone, like, Oh, move, move to the side. All right. All right. There you go. Keep going. So they're, they're filming this thing. God. And the Venezuela like, has one of the, oh. one of the uh, prisons. There's a prison in Venezuela that's the most violent prison like in the world. Like, yeah. It's got the most murders. It's like, like every day there's a murder. It's so of, of course, prisons, I'm huge. sitting here. I cannot tell my family this stuff. I'm stressing the fuck out. That's when I go. I said, I'm going to New York. I got to disappear. I got to mm. go. So I pack my stuff and I go to New York and I become an art salesman. And I start selling photographs for a photographer called Peter Lick. I don't know if you guys heard him. Yeah, I don't know, that sounds familiar. Yeah, he sells, he's, 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 the, he's the Matt Cox of photography. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the guy's brilliant, brilliant. And I start making a bunch of money and I start living you know, a good life in New York and real estate is behind me. And But you're always on the run. And mm -hmm. when you're on the run, man, it's, you know, you know they're gonna come for you.